how to create a Minecraft Java Edition multiplayer server on an Ubuntu cloud server or virtual private server VPS. The very first thing we need to do is create a cloud server to install our Minecraft server on. To do this, open up your browser and then navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link to DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a cloud hosting platform, and if you use my referral link to create a free account, you'll get $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. So basically, you'll get almost two months in free hosting for your Minecraft server. You can find my referral link in the video description below. To sign up, you'll need to either enter in an email address and a password, and then click on create free account, or you can click on Google or GitHub to sign up with your Google or GitHub account. Once you've created your free DigitalOcean account and have gone through the sign up process, you'll need to sign into your DigitalOcean account. Click on sign in to sign into your DigitalOcean account. Once you're signed in, you'll be taken to your DigitalOcean control panel page. To create a cloud server, navigate to where it says create at the top and click on it to be greeted with a drop down menu of all of DigitalOcean services. The service that we're looking for is called Droplets. Droplets are what DigitalOcean calls cloud servers. Click on Droplets to select this service. In the Droplet creation page, you'll first need to choose a region for your Minecraft server. My advice is to pick a server closest to your region and your friends that are going to be playing on your server. So that way you get the best ping possible while you're connected and playing your Minecraft Java Edition server. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with London. So I'm just going to click on London here to select it. And then I'm going to continue to scroll down until I see where it says, choose an image. OS should be selected by default. If it's not, click on OS. And then you should see various operating systems that you can install on your DigitalOcean droplet. The operating system that I'm going to be going with is Ubuntu. As you can see, it's already pre-selected. If it isn't for you, just simply click on it to select it. For the version, click on this box here to be greeted with a drop-down menu. And the version of Ubuntu that we want is Ubuntu 22.04 LTS x64. Left click on it to select it. You can select another version of Ubuntu if you want, such as the next LTS version. But for this video, the latest Ubuntu LTS version is Ubuntu 22.04. Next, scroll down until you see where it says choose size. This is your droplet type. You have shared CPU and dedicated CPU. The droplet type that I'm going to be going with is basic, which is the current plan selected. If it's not, just simply click on it. This is the cheaper plan of the two. Next is CPU options. You have three choices. You have regular, which gives you the disk type SSD, premium Intel, which gives you a disk type NVMe SSD, and premium AMD, which also gives you a disk type of NVMe SSD. Now the premium CPUs are much quicker than the regular CPU. And of course you get a more modern SSD, which is the NVMe SSD, whereas here you get the regular SSD. Regular of course is cheaper, and the premium Intel and premium AMD are a bit more expensive. If you choose regular, it will be enough to run your Minecraft server. If you're looking for slightly higher specs, go with one of the premium versions. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with premium AMD, which is already pre-selected. I'm then going to scroll down until I see the plan options. As you can see, it ranges from $7 a month all the way to $112 a month. The lowest plan of one gigabyte of RAM, one AMD CPU, 25 gigabytes of NVMe SSD storage, and 1000 gigabytes or one terabyte of bandwidth transfer will be enough to meet the minimum specifications for running your Minecraft Java Edition server. Now for this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with the $14 a month server, which basically doubles the specs, however keeps a single AMD CPU core, like the $7 a month version. Again, the $7 a month plan will be enough to run your Minecraft Java Edition server. Once you've selected your DigitalOcean droplet plan, continue to scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Select password if it's not already pre-selected, and then create a root password for your DigitalOcean droplet. This root password will be the password you use to connect to your server via an SSH client. You'll also need this password to customize your Minecraft server, such as opping yourself, changing game modes, and so on and so forth. Here's the password requirements when you are creating a root password for your server. So I'm just going to create one now. Once you've created your password, scroll down until you see where it says host name. Host name allows you to give your droplet an identifying name. This allows you to know which droplet in your DigitalOcean control panel is your Minecraft server. So in this text box here, I'm going to delete the default pre-type droplet name, and I'm going to give my droplet a name of Minecraft dash Java dash server. Once you've picked a host name, all that's left to do is to create your droplet by clicking on create droplet. Your DigitalOcean droplet will then start being created. I'll be back with you guys once our droplet is running. All right, I'm back. 
And as you can see, my Minecraft dash Java dash server is now up and running. And that's indicated by the green circle status on the left hand side of our droplets name. To the right hand side, you can see our droplets IP address which is what people will use to connect to your Minecraft Java Edition server. Now what you'll need to do is copy your Droplets IP address by clicking on the word copy to the right hand side of your Droplets IP address. Your Droplets IP is now copied to your clipboard. Next what we'll need to do is to connect to our server via an SSH client. To do this we're going to need to download and install an SSH client. Open up another tab in your browser and navigate to the following URL address, putty.org. Once you're here, you'll be on the putty download page click on download putty. Here you'll see the installers for various operating systems. Now putty is one of many different kinds of SSH clients and if you're not running Windows you'll need to download and install another SSH client. Now I'm not going to take you through the process of downloading and installing putty as I already have a video created which takes you through a step-by-step -step process of downloading and installing putty. I'll link this video in this video description below and as a card at the top right hand corner of this video. Once you've downloaded and installed putty, you can minimize your browser to be taken back to your desktop. On your desktop, you should now see a shortcut for the putty client. If you don't, you'll need to search for the putty program client on your computer. To open putty, just simply double click on the putty shortcut. Now putty is open, you should then see the following putty configuration interface. At the top, you see the first option that you need to fill in, which is hostname or IP address. This is the IP address of your DigitalOcean droplet. All you need to do is paste in the IP address of your DigitalOcean droplet that you copied to your clipboard previously. Leave the port as 22 and make sure SSH connection type is selected if it already isn't. It should be pre-selected by default. All that's left to do now is to click on open. Once done, you'll be greeted with the following putty security alert, which states that the server's host key is not cached in your registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now, of course, this is a normal putty security alert as this is the the first time you are connecting to your new digital ocean droplet and of course you know that this is your digital ocean droplet so to connect to your droplet you're either going to need to click on accept or connect once i'm going to click on accept to cache the host key to my registry next maximize your putty terminal window you're going to be logging in as root so type the word root and then hit enter on your keyboard for your password this is going to be your root password that you created when you were setting up your digital ocean droplet so i'm just going to enter in my root password now and then hit enter on my keyboard once you've done that, you'll be successfully logged in to your DigitalOcean droplet. The very first command we're going to type into our command line terminal window is the command to install Java. All commands that I demonstrate in this video will be in the video description below, so you can just copy them and right click to paste them into your putty terminal window. So type the following command to install Java, apt space install space open jdk 19 dash jre dash headless. Once you've typed in the following command, hit enter on your keyboard. Your command line terminal will then ask you, do you want to continue with the installation of Java, Y for yes and N for no, type Y on your keyboard and then hit enter. Java will then begin installing on your DigitalOcean droplet. If you're greeted with the following purple screen, which asks you which services should be restarted, just press tab on your keyboard to highlight the word OK and then hit enter on your keyboard. Great, so we've now installed Java onto our DigitalOcean droplet, which is the basic program needed to run our Minecraft Java Edition server. Next, what we'll need to do is download our server.jar file onto to our digital ocean droplet. To do this, open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address minecraft.net slash en dash us slash download slash server. Once you're here, you'll be on the download the Minecraft Java edition server. Look to where it says download minecraft underscore dot jar and run it with the following command. So this piece of hyperlink text here, which says minecraft underscore server dot jar, you want to right click on it and then copy link address. Once you've done that, open back up your party terminal window and type the following command wget space and then right click to paste in the minecraft server.jar download link address. Once you've done that, just hit enter on your keyboard. The minecraft server.jar will then be downloaded onto your server. To check if it has indeed been downloaded, just type the following command ls and then hit enter on your keyboard. This will list the files in the current directory that you're in and as you can see server.jar has been successfully downloaded onto our server. The next thing we need to do is enter the command to start our Minecraft Java Edition server. To do this, open back up your browser and make sure you're back on the download the Minecraft Java Edition server page. Underneath where you copied the link address for the server.jar file, you should see the command to start your Minecraft server. It should be in purple. Highlight it and then right click on it and then click on copy to copy this command. Once you've done that, open back up your potty terminal window and right click to 
a paste. So we will need to change some things with this Java command. And that is mainly the Minecraft underscore server.jar name. R.jar file is actually called server.jar and not minecraft underscore server dot jar. There's actually two dots here for some reason. What you're going to need to do is replace minecraft underscore server dot jar with just the word server dot jar. So what we're going to do is simply backspace until we delete the word minecraft server dot jar. So now all you should have is java space dash xmx 1024m space dash xms 1024m space dot jar space. Now what you want to type in here is server dot jar and finish it off with space no GUI. The full command now should be java space dash xmx 1024m space dash xms 1024m space dash jar space server dot jar space no GUI. Of course this command will be in the video description below so you won't need to change anything you can just copy this command and right click to paste it in. Once you've entered in the following command just hit enter on your keyboard. This command will then attempt to start your Minecraft Java Edition server. The first time around your Minecraft server won't start. However some of your Minecraft Java Edition files will be created. As you can see there's a little message here which says fail to load eula.txt. You need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server. Go to the EULA.txt for more info. So there's something we're going to need to change in the EULA.txt file before we can run our server. So to edit the EULA.txt file, you're going to need to type the nano command, which allows you to edit text documents on the command line. Type nano space and then the name of your txt file, which is EULA.txt. Once you type this in, hit enter on your keyboard. If you look at the very top of the eula.txt file, you can see the line which says eula equals false. We'll need to change this to eula equals true. Simply use your arrow keys on your keyboard to get in front of the word false. Use your backspace key to delete the word false and then type the word true. Once you've done that, you'll need to save the changes you have just made to this eula.txt document by pressing Ctrl plus O on your keyboard. Once you've done that, hit enter on your keyboard and then to exit, press Ctrl plus X on your keyboard to exit out of this txt file and be taken back to the command line. Now we can actually run our minecraft start server command. However, before we do that, we'll need to turn on screen. The screen program basically allows your server to run 24 seven. To start screen, simply type the word screen and hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be greeted with the following. Simply press enter on your keyboard. Your command line will now be blank, but you'll still be logged into your server. Next, what you'll need to do is type the Minecraft Java edition start server command. So all I'm going to do is open back up my browser. I'm going to right click on the command and click on copy to copy it once again. Open back up my pudgy terminal window, right click to paste, delete everything up until where it says Minecraft here, and then replace it with server.jar space no GUI. Once you've typed in or pasted in the following command once again, just hit enter on your keyboard and your Minecraft Java Edition server will finally begin to start. I'll be back with you guys once our Minecraft Java Edition server is up and running. All right guys, I'm back. And as you can see, our Minecraft Java Edition server is now up and running. You can now safely close out of your PuTTY terminal window and your Minecraft server will still be running. If you're using PuTTY as the SSH client, when you click on the X, it will greet you with a small notification window which says PuTTY exit confirmation. Are you sure you want to close the session? Just simply click on OK. Now all that's left to do is open up your Minecraft launcher and add your Minecraft server's IP address to your multiplayer servers list and join it. To do this, first I'm going to just grab the IP address of my DigitalOcean droplet by clicking on the word copy right next to it to copy the IP address and then I'm going to open up my Minecraft Java Edition launcher. I'm then going to click on multiplayer to be taken to the multiplayer server list. As you can see, there are no multiplayer servers that I've added to my list. To add a server, simply click on add server, give your server a name, so I'm just going to call it Websplaining server. In the server address, just simply click on it and then paste in your DigitalOcean server's IP address that you copied to your clipboard earlier. Then just simply click on done. The Minecraft multiplayer server list will then refresh, ping your server to check if it's online and display your server stats. So as you can see, my server is up and running. It's got full strength signal and it's currently got zero out of 20 players. To connect to your server, simply click on it to select it and then click on join server. Your Minecraft launcher will then connect you to your newly created Minecraft Java Edition server. And there we go. I have successfully created a Minecraft Java Edition server and I have connected to it. You can now share the IP address of your digital ocean droplet with your friends and they'll also be able to play with you. Now, if you want to learn more about Minecraft Java Edition and Minecraft Bedrock Edition, 
edition servers, then check out my Minecraft playlist for a list of videos on what you can do with your server. So for example, I have videos on how you can point your Minecraft IP address to a domain name such as, for example, websplaining.com. And instead of people entering in your IP address as your server address, they can simply enter your domain name. I also have videos on how to op yourself, how to change your Minecraft game mode, and many other videos which you may find helpful. On that note, that pretty much concludes this video on how to create a Minecraft Java Edition multiplayer server on an Ubuntu cloud server or virtual private server, VPS. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Wait, is it so